How does evolution really work? The primary way that evolution occurs is through the action of natural selection. That is, populations change in response to environmental pressures, and they become adapted to new conditions, and they change over time. Following Charles Darwin's lead, biologist Chris Schneider and his colleagues travel to Ecuador to study the evolution of several animal species. This lush rainforest is a natural laboratory for ongoing investigation of evolutionary theory. Natural selection is at the core of their research on hummingbirds. In our research, we're trying to understand how new species arise. This is Darwin's fundamental question you know, on the origin of species. How do new species arise? And what we're finding is that natural selection seems to be an incredibly important factor in generating new species. Natural selection, the key evolutionary mechanism Darwin identified, is really four processes. Genetic variation, overproduction of offspring, struggle for existence, and differential survival and reproduction. First, genetic variation. Individuals within a species vary from one to the other. For evolution to work by natural selection, the characteristics that give an individual an advantage in a certain environment have to be passed on from one generation to the next. And in hummingbirds, bill length seems to, seems to have a very strong genetic basis. That is, if two parents mate and both of those parents have long bills, their offspring will have long bills. If those parents have shorter bills, their offspring will have shorter bills. Second, there is overproduction of offspring. Darwin realized that natural selection would operate because individuals uh, in natural populations tend to produce more offspring than can survive. For example, hummingbirds over their lifetime will often produce dozens of offspring, but only one or two of those individuals are likely to survive. The third factor in natural selection is the struggle for existence, and that leads to differential survival and reproduction. In any population, whether it's plants or animals or whatever, this excess production of individuals results in this, in what Darwin called the struggle for existence. And what he had in mind there, I think, was the competition for food and space uh, and mates as well. Hummingbirds compete for nectar. They often compete very fiercely for limited resources. Natural selection will favor individuals that, that are more efficient at getting nectar, and natural selection will result in changes in wing shape that allow hummingbirds to fly uh, longer distances, for instance, or maybe to be more maneuverable. Uh, to maneuver around flowers and get nectar more efficiently. And probably most importantly, it'll affect the length and shape of the bill. Some bill measurements. In the case of hummingbirds, we know that um, a one or two millimeter change in length can have profound differences on how efficiently that bird feeds and how well it survives. Individual survivors are more likely to reproduce and pass on their advantageous as well as other genes to their offspring. In an environment with long flowers, having a long bill is an advantageous trait. Not necessarily the absolute best trait always, just a better one in this environment. Hummingbirds with small bills may not survive, and eventually there will only be hummingbirds with long bills. Over a long period of time, the entire population of hummingbirds adapts to the shape and size of the flowers that exist in that environment. If you're in the woods and you're walking with another person and you come on a bear and the bear chases you, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You only have to be faster than the other person because the bear eats them and you get away. Species cannot develop the adaptations that benefit them in their lifetimes. Just as you cannot make your arm longer to reach a book on a shelf up high, individual small-billed hummingbirds that move into an area where there are longer flowers can't make their bills longer. 
Their bill length is determined by the DNA they inherited from their parents. Three. Okay. Schneider uses hummingbird DNA sequences to reconstruct their evolutionary history as it has been shaped by natural selection. Genetic variation, overproduction of offspring, struggle for existence, and differential survival and reproduction. We're just essentially doing what Darwin did, but with a, with a, a bunch of fancy new tools. We're using molecular biology, we're using modern computational methods and all these things, but we're just doing basic natural history, really. And in the hummingbirds, we found that, that many of the species are, are relatively young. That is, they've evolved in the last two or three million years, uh, which is pretty quick on an evolutionary time scale. Darwin emphasized over and over, I mean repeatedly in The Origin of Species, the fact that small changes would accrue every generation, and that over the enormous length of time that life has been present on Earth, these changes could build up to, to amount to enormous changes. It was Charles Darwin's genius to have identified natural selection as the central force in evolution. And I think that in uh, research over the last 10 or 15 years has really supported that. I think most evolutionary biologists would agree that natural selection is probably the single most important force in evolution.